Bush, you've obviously been around a lot of great backs. Um, what's what's the ceiling? What's what's Genty bring into the table now that that puts him among maybe the best you've been able to coach? Yeah, he's uh, he, he's he, he's he can do it all. You know, I think from the standpoint of uh, certainly you guys see the great vision, the great balance, uh, the durability, the tough runs. Um, but again, when you can play with a guy like that, spread him out, his natural pass catching ability, uh, you know, at times it feels feels like you're playing with an extra guy out there uh, when, when you have a running back that can do those things. Um, it's just crazy to think how young he is. Again, you know, how much more room he has to grow. Uh, but but you know him as the player. Uh, him as the person allows him to keep taking the next step. Coach, you've been around a while. His ability to make yards after the catch, yards after the contact. I mean, where does he stack up and guys you've seen over your time coaching college football? Yeah, super impressed. You know, I mean, he 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 reminds you of some of those NFL backs. You know, I joke around sometimes. We had Devontae Freeman, I think, in 2017 in Atlanta. And at times, uh, you'd almost – you, you didn't question the toughness from that guy. It was almost like, hey, man, you, you got to protect yourself a little bit more. But um, he, he's got that make-you-miss ability. Uh, we're fortunate to have had the backs we had at Washington when I was there, um, and, and he certainly can play with those guys for sure. I want to see back and watch some of those runs. Is there one that kind of sticks out to you that you had the other night? Yeah, you know, I just thought that, that four-minute run there at the end of the game, you know, it just seems like, okay, uh, it's a two-, three-yard run. You're like looking down at your game plan to figure out, hey, what's my third down call? And before you know it, you know, the guy's pushing the pile and, and creating a first down. Th things like that are constantly happening where you think it's maybe a three, four yard play. He makes a guy miss and, and you kind of hear the guys in the box erupting and you almost got to shift your focus on, you know, what's the next play call 30 yards down the field, if you will. You're talking about kind of his, you know, where you want him at in terms of the snap count and stuff like that. But just in general, that the wear and tear he puts on his body and that workload and what he did. I mean, you want to keep feeding him as much as you can, but also, like, how sustainable is that versus how much do you still need, like, other guys and the passing attack and other parts of this offense to, to work to make this all work? Yeah, we, we need it in a big way, you know, and I think, uh, you know, what Breezy's been able to do and go in there uh, and, and provide quality reps has been critical, right? Every rep you take off of, of Genty right now is a critical rep. Uh, certainly, you know, this we know what we got to get done, right? We got to improve certainly throwing the football. I think we get that done. We take some pressure off Ash, and now we're really uh, playing at a high level. So, um, you know, I think we're very aware of what needs to get done. Uh, we're also it's a give or take, right? Because as you're as you're pushing to improve those areas, these are tight games, you know, and every every call matters. Um, and and right now, you you rely on the guy who's going to make plays in, in games like that on the road against a really quality opponent. You take a lot of production that Ashton has given you and take away that even the production EMAC has given you, you're left with less than 600 yards of offense through four games. I mean, is there a number of reliable weapons that you'd like to have offensively or? Yeah, I think we got to keep keep developing. I think that's a tough one, right? It's it's almost like saying, hey, take away maybe Peyton Manning when, when you're in the heyday or Marvin Harrison at the time. and, and um, But I think, look, we got to continue to develop, you know, and I think we got the players there. We got to continue to give them better chances. Um, but uh, again, I think certainly getting some of these guys back is, is going to be critical as well. Uh, continuing to spread the ball out is going to be critical. We know what it is, you know, and I think uh, we can't be one dimensional, and that's what we're uh, looking to move forward. Ashton obviously broke, you know, 100 tackles or whatever, but, but some of the holes, I mean, it looked like he was running through the Red Sea at times. What, you know, <laughs> how impressed were you with? The tight end setting the edges, and then the physicality from the offensive line. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I think Tim Keen and Nate Potter probably don't get enough credit. You know, I mean, they have done a tremendous job. I, I go back to uh, however you want to look at it, the the rankings of the teams we've played. I mean, those are four really, really good fronts. You know, and I think you look at Washington and and what that's going to look like when the NFL draft comes around with their their edge players. Uh, you look at UCF. Uh, you look at North Dakota, how, how well they played. You look at San Diego State and what they've done stopping the run. Um, they've done a tremendous job. It's a testament to their players. Uh, it's a testament to their physicality and their buy-in to everything this program's all about. And uh, it's it's a huge strength of ours. As you look at the film and, and break down this offensive line, why are they why have they been so dominant and consistent? I, I think um, the high-end guys that we've known about are, are playing to that level. You know, I think Garrett. 
uh, has, has, has done a tremendous job. I think we, you, you know what Cade's going to do, um, you know, when Ben Dooley was in there. But I think you really got to look at the other guys. You know, I look at Cage Casey in that last game versus a physical defensive line, what he displayed there. You look at Mason coming back off an injury. I mean, again, he was a guy that was thinking, okay, maybe he's going to get through 20 to 25 plays. You guys know how it is. And then you're like, the game's over, and you're like, man, that guy didn't just make it through the whole game. Like he, he played an extremely high level. Uh, what Ethan's done is his addition. So I think it's it's that depth, if you will. Uh, again, you know what the veteran guys have provided, uh, but the depth and, and those other guys coming along has been what's really impressive. So did you think Mason was going to be on a step count then? Did, did I hear that right? Or? I mean, look, anytime a guy hasn't played, you know, in a long time, you you're hopeful that he goes the whole 68 plays. Um, but, I mean, it was certainly a thing like, hey, we're going to check in drive to drive, see how he's doing. Um, and, and, again, it's a testament to him and his toughness to, to go the distance. Well, how impressed were you with him and just, you know, kind of, uh, you know, especially with both Ben and Ethan out uh, for, for yeah. that game, how important was it to, to get him back into the lineup? It was huge. I mean, he, his athleticism, you know, not, not just in, at this conference but across the board. I mean, he's a guy who plays with – unbelievable athleticism and physicality and again I mean it's I just can't say enough about him I can't say enough about the unit their preparation uh, with as much rotation as there's been up front it's like the next man has just stepped up and you know you look at a guy like Roger you know a guy who who maybe last year didn't didn't you know get everything he wanted to get but how he's playing uh, there's been six or seven guys that have been playing at a really high level and been playing together at that position seen him go up high point balls. Yeah. He ran away from guys, but he had a couple of pretty impressive, you know, shorter catches that he, that he turned into big games. Yeah. Um, what do you think of those specific plays and, and how much, I mean, if he can do that, you know, one on one, how much does that take his game to another level? I don't think the offense is going to Yeah, I think it's huge. I think uh, certainly the ones I remember were those critical third down ones late in the game. Uh, one, we were trying a double move down the field. It wasn't there. Got him the ball. He spun out on a third and nine. Um, again, making the catch on that slant. It was a cover zero situation there late, made a guy miss, uh, took that down to about the five yard line. So <clears throat> I think we say it every week with that guy, right? It's just like constant state of improvement. Um, and, and again, he's got a high ceiling and you guys know that with some of the great players that have been around this program. And so uh, you're absolutely right. It's his ability to run vertical. It's his ability to transition, run intermediate routes. And then uh, now when the ball gets to him behind the line of scrimmage or within two, three yards, his ability to make people miss uh, is, is making him a more complete player. State and Memphis have obviously never played in football, but Denton, Texas, where uh, the Memphis QB is from, is only about 15 miles away from where uh, Talon is from. I heard that they played in high school. Did, have you heard a little bit from Talon yet that they have a rivalry going on? Have you heard anything? Yeah, I don't know if they have a rivalry, but there's, all, there, there's definitely a, a lot of mutual respect. I think every time we've watched a clip of them, he just throws it out there, Dallas, Texas, you know, and so uh, – you know, we, we've got a lot of respect for this quarterback as well. You know, just, just being regionally where I was, I mean, he's a guy who his freshman year uh, certainly accomplished a lot. He's got great toughness. And, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's one of the many challenges. I mean, I, I know it feels like we're saying this every week, but uh, you, you look at this defense we're getting ready to play. You, get, you look at this program, it's, it's, uh, it's another really good unit. And sometimes maybe it sounds like that. It's a, it's a team with uh, – they've revamped their roster, if you will, right? They're, they got an interior guy that played a lot for Oklahoma. They got a safety that was playing at Arkansas against us over the last course of a couple years. And so this is going to be a tremendous challenge on all sides of the ball. You were, the, you were a freshman right on the Liberty Bowl team in 04. I was. What, uh, what do you remember about uh, going there and Andy's, uh, Andy's uh, interception return? Yeah, I just, I, I just remember um, – Gosh, I got to be honest. It was probably one of the best teams I ever remember playing. You know that Louisville team. If if you guys remember, both the quarterbacks, uh, offense, defense, special teams. Um, but I just, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, I do remember that interception. I remember late in that game. Uh, you know, I think throwing like a hail mary at the end to try to win it. Um, but but two really really good football teams uh, playing at a high high level. So. Last two games, a little slow start on off before you guys responded. And he kind of brought up like the opening script and the execution there. What do you, what do you want to see out of that? Bush is, is you guys, you know, go to Memphis. Yeah, I think uh, any time, you know, you want to start fast for sure. You know, you want to be able to. 
uh, if you will, he's always talking about, uh, you know, we, we got a feel of how they're going to play us, what they're going to try to stop, and, and the sooner we can get to uh, finding those answers, the better, just because uh, not only putting, putting points on the board early, but I think it sets the tone for the whole team, you know, from a confidence standpoint, when you can get in rhythm, when you can execute early, especially in third downs and, and create long drives, I think it sets the tone. So um, I think you see it week in and week out how important those openers are, and we got to do a better job with that. Taylor was over 50% completion, um, but you know, it seemed like there were a couple missed opportunities. How would you evaluate the passing attack after Friday? Uh, not where we want it to be. You know, I think <laughs> you probably know that with, with the question. We've we got to continue, um, again, to, to find what are those throws, what are those plays he feels most comfortable with. Um, again, pass past success is, is not a one-man job. We all know that as well, right? It starts uh, from a protection standpoint. It goes to creating separation. It goes to him making, uh, developing as a, as a good decision maker. And I think that's, uh, that's critical in his development. It's something we think he can certainly do, and, and we're excited to continue to move forward. Andy was saying after the game, you know, we're, we're going to run the ball or run first team or something like that. Um, I mean, is that kind of where you see the identity shifting is – just a ground and pound type thing, and, and hopefully that opens some things up in the passing game. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you know you ever say, hey, this is exactly who we are. You know, every game calls for different things, and again, I think when you're calling plays, uh, you better be calling plays with a lot of factors. I probably say that a lot. You know, like how's their offense looking? How's their quarterback playing? How, how do we feel about our guy? Is he comfortable? How are we running the ball? I mean, it's you guys know it. It's such a fine line. You know, it's like, okay, uh, you're throwing it too much or you're running it too much. Uh, are you getting this guy the ball, getting that guy the ball? Uh, it just comes down to every week are we putting our team in position to win football games. And I think that's maybe the growth. That's, that's probably the biggest thing I would say is we got to win football games and, and uh, every game's going to dictate different things. So, Bush, when, when, when players maybe see things before they happen, I sense that with Ashton a little bit. Is is that just natural ability, or can that be a developed skill mm -hmm. with a running back? Yeah, I think it's uh, – you probably see it at all positions. You know that uh, – you probably mentioned it, the, the instincts of playing the game, right? Like I, I sometimes laugh like you guys obviously know – uh, all the stories of Kellen Moore, but Kellen Moore is a guy that showed up here as a freshman at 18 years old, and it was he had already done a lot of those things a thousand times before he even got here. You know, it's like second nature to him, and I think it's a testament to Ashton and and the amount of football he's played. Um, I think vision can certainly improve over the course of your career, but uh, as you know, some guys just have it, you know, and they have it from thousands of reps, um, and especially when they do it at a young age. Um, and, and that's that's everything he's been able to accomplish. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like the unsung heroes, if you will. You know, I don't know how much we talk about them, but I know this: if if they weren't healthy, if they weren't able to go, we would have big issues. You know, and I think those guys uh, provide a lot of flexibility. Um, they're they're willing to do whatever it takes to. to Again, be in the run game and, and maybe get limited opportunities in the pass game as of right now. And so uh, those two guys are everything this program's all about. And uh, from a toughness standpoint, I mean, some of the edges they've created along with what the guys have done up front have been tremendous. Anything else? Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.